And Brian Kelly, founder and CEO of BKCM Digital Asset Management. Brian, I know you're a longtime Bitcoin bull. So, so for you, what? Did, did this feel normal? It did not feel normal for a lot of people who are new into currencies and trading Bitcoin to have a 30 percent move lower. Yeah, so even for a so-called grizzled veteran like myself, you know, a 30% move in any asset class certainly um, wakes you up in the morning when you see it. But, you know, I, I, there's a couple of things that happened here. Um, primarily, the biggest part of this sell-off was due to margin calls and liquidations, and the exchanges couldn't handle the volume. They effectively stopped trading, and it just cascaded down. But on days like today, I always ask myself, has my thesis broken? And for me, what's driving this Bitcoin market is institutional adoption and a hedge against currency debasement. None of those things over the last 24 hours have changed at all. So I have to say, no, my thesis isn't broken. This is just a mechanical sell-off that got exacerbated, and I want to be a buyer. But governments and central banks might not like the whole currency debasement argument for Bitcoin. And we saw overnight <laughs> moves from China spark the selling. The ECB came out with its financial stability report. Pretty brutal assessment of Bitcoin, compared, saying it's, it's worse than tulip mania. So doesn't it just show how vulnerable Bitcoin and some of these other cryptos are to governments and central banks making comments and eventually potentially taking action? I mean, so forgive me if, if I cast a side eye towards a central bank saying that their cur a currency other than theirs uh, is not great. I mean, you know, that's like asking a barber, do I need a haircut? Of course you do. But what I would say about that is absolutely that, you know, it is go there, is a th there, is, there is a threat to central banks. They can stop debasing their currency any time they want. But Bitcoin doesn't have to be a threat. This is a new technology and a new digital ecosystem, and it can be embraced just like gold was embraced. So what China did actually probably is more predicated on the fact that they have they are launching their central bank digital currency, the digital RMB. And so they wanted to make sure that there was nobody out in the channels that everybody is going to use the digital RMB. Once they have the digital, digital RMB, there's no reason why they couldn't turn these things back on. It just happens to be that the ramp into it is the digital RMB as opposed to something like Tether. Brian, what's your take on uh, the, the level of influence that Elon Musk clearly still has uh, over Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? It, it helped today. It gave uh, Bitcoin a boost intraday. But the very fact that that's possible, does it not make uh, the price of Bitcoin very vulnerable in, in the short term, at least, even if your thesis is, is, uh, is on point for the long term? Yeah, I, I, I mean... Market action would tell you absolutely. And, and I think, you know, Bitcoin has to survive this. The, the entire point of the creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, getting out of the way is that there would be no single person that has control over it, either the protocol, the code or the price. And so now we have Elon Musk, who voiced some concerns. It did move the market. Uh, but Bitcoin has to get over it if, if in the long run it is going to fulfill that promise of becoming a global currency. I happen to think that it will. I happen to think that we've seen this multiple times through multiple cycles. And every time Bitcoin has just come right back, as they say in the Bitcoin world, the honey badger don't care. And that's kind of how Bitcoin has been. Um, so that's why I felt comfortable today stepping in and buying it, because for this to work, for the thesis to play out, it has to get over what Elon Musk has to say. So, so just quickly with that, that, that in mind, if it is vulnerable in the short term, how worried are you by the, the, the look of the chart? Because this asset, more than many others, does get influenced by technicals. All the, all the bulls and the bears look at the mm -hmm. technicals of Bitcoin, not necessarily the fundamentals. And in the short term, if there's vulnerability, uh, are you worried about that massive ramp last year all unraveling and, uh, you know, quite a lot of downside to come potentially in the short term? So I'm not because of the, if I just purely look at price action, bounced off 29,000 today. That was just massive support area. Uh, and it bounced off that with some very big buyers. Fundamentally, actually, this sell off at 29,000 created a huge buying opportunity on the fundamental side. The market is pricing in a 30% decline in addresses. And one way to think about that is like MAUs for Facebook. They're predicting a third, the market is implying a 30% decline in that, yet, addresses are growing or flat. And so to me, fundamentally, we haven't seen an opportunity like that since March of 2020. And that's what today reminded me very much of. So 
I look at both the chart and the fundamentals, and this actually looks like a pretty decent buying opportunity. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.